Today on The Daily Dose, Plessy v. Ferguson. After the Compromise of 1877 ended post-Civil War Reconstruction efforts in the South, Southern blacks saw the promise of equality granted to them by the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments crushed under a rising tide of segregationist black codes. Much like the Freedom Riders of 1961, who would follow their lead, who used whites-only facilities in bus terminals as a stress test to the Supreme Court's 1960 Boynton v. Virginia ruling declaring segregation inside interstate transportation facilities unconstitutional after Louisiana mandated segregated railway cars in 1890, backed by other pre-civil rights movement activists, Homer Adolph Plessy agreed to set out by train to challenge the new law, boarding a whites-only rail car on June 7, 1892, departing New Orleans for the sleepy North Shore community of Covington, Louisiana. Despite his mixed-race ethnicity, Plessy claiming he was seven-eighths Caucasian, when a conductor insisted he leave the car, Plessy refused, leading to his prompt arrest and imprisonment. Convicted by a New Orleans court for violating state law, Plessy filed a petition against the Honorable John H. Ferguson, the presiding judge over his trial, claiming that the state's 1890 law violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, and as segregationist laws continued to accelerate throughout the Jim Crow South, including congressional nullification of many Reconstruction-era laws, Plessy's persistent tenacity elevated his case to the Supreme Court. On May 18, 1896, the Supreme Court at last issued its ruling on Plessy v. Ferguson, declaring that separate but equal facilities were indeed constitutional on interstate railroads, insisting that the protections laid down by the 14th Amendment applied solely to political and civil rights freedoms, such as voting and jury duty, yet had no bearing over, as the justices phrased it, social rights freedoms. Addressing Plessy's argument that segregated black rail cars were necessarily inferior, Justice Henry Brown wrote that we consider the underlying fallacy of Plessy's argument to consist in the assumption that the enforced separation of the two races stamps the colored race with a badge of inferiority. If this be so, it is not by reason of anything found in the act, but solely because the colored race chooses to put that construction upon it, making Plessy v. Ferguson an open season invitation for white racism in America. And there you have it, Plessy v. Ferguson, today in The Daily Dose. If you like learning something new every day, subscribe to The Daily Dose on YouTube or sign up for emails at dailydosenow.com.